Hi, Happy New Year. Welcome to this quick video to talk through the features that I've released today. Uh, there's quite a few of them, so I thought video is the best approach. Uh, first thing to point out is on the dashboard, there are several new panels. So I've added Flyer ID, OSC, changed PFCO to OA, and then added GVC and E. So Operator ID, OSC and OA are all at business level. So you edit those in my profile, edit my business, and you can change operator ID, uh, set the expiry date there. You need to add accountable manager, um, uh, first name, last name, and then operational authorization. Um, if you're maintaining your PFCO, as it used to be called, then uh, you'd enter the details. Then if you have OSCs, then you can enter the details here. So tick the box and enter the expiry date and the various permissions that you might have. Okay, so that's the business level stuff. Then we got the individual level stuff, which is Flyer ID, GVC, A2, C of C. And those you edit on a per team member basis. So you need to go into team, edit your team member, um, and then you can specify Flyer ID and expiry. The operator ID and um, OA are both here as options. So if you've got pilots who are flying uh, under your OSC, but also have their own operator or ID or operational authorization, then you've got the option to enter those here. Otherwise, it'll default to your business operator ID and PFCO. Oh, sorry. Uh, and then GVC and A2C, A2C of C, just select yes or no and enter the expiry date. And then the the dates, these panels will, will flag when the dates are coming up for uh, renewal and so on. You'll notice the graphics broadly reflect the graphics that the CAA using on the ID they issue when you apply for your flyer ID and operator ID. So I've updated the ID card. And this by default will always show your flyer ID uh, first name, last name, and expiry date with a QR code that will take anybody to the CAA uh, checker where they'll enter those details to, to verify your identity. And then depending on your level of um, authorization, you'll get this graphic and this will be in descending order from OSC to OA, or PFCO, uh, GVC, A2, CFC. If you have none of those, then it'll just default to A1 and A, A3 open category. And the heading will reflect the graphic that's displayed down there. And then similarly, in the verified badge, um, <clears throat> I've modified the, the badge, removed the PFCO reference, which was there previously. Um, but you still have the option to have the flight scenario shown on there or not. Um, I'm going to fix this graphic, by the way. And then the verified page has been updated slightly. The the text has been updated. So we moved reference to PFCO. And then I've added a link to the CAA registration checker. And then finally, in relation to operator IDs and so on. Um, when you add a drone now, you'll be asked to enter the operator ID. And that generally speaking will be your business operator ID, which is already been, which will be pre-filled from the details that you previously provided. So that just kind of helps tie together your drones to your organization. Okay, so that's the authorization stuff. Just one quick one in tenders. So the, the tenders list tends to grow um, significantly so i've added an option to hide tenders that you're no longer interested in uh, so just click the uh, crossed out i and it will remove tenders that you no longer, no longer want to see uh, that's tenders um and then the the, the majority of changes are in uh, the job section uh, so let me add a new job with client select like the location Remote pilot, you now have an option to add a secondary uh, remote pilot if you want to. And additionally, one or two observers. So in total, you can add four, up to four 
individual team members to to any job. And similarly, you can add more than one drone. Um, everything will be planned against the primary drone, but you can add a secondary. Uh, when it comes to select a date, unless you've got a fixed date, then um, I've provided the uh, weather forecast now, seven day weather forecast to help you choose, which is uh, gonna be a good day for flying. So let's say the fifth is looking good. Day-ish. Okay, um, I'm going to point out that this table is now sorted by start date. I'll tell you why in a sec. So let's go into manage job. So there's a new button on the top menu bar, which allows you now to scroll through all the jobs that you have in the system. So it will start at the top. The, job you just selected obviously uh, and then you can scroll down through the table through the records and it will um, it'll always scroll through in the order in which the table is sorted so I sorted by start date and that's what I'm doing I'm scrolling down the records uh, by virtue of the start date okay so that's just a quick way for you to whiz through your job records uh, right new stuff in the job table then so job details the naming conventions have been changed to remote pilot and prior S. The remote pilot now is the fly, fly ID and should have a mobile number or contact number listed there. And the uh, UAS primary US operator ID show. If you've added any additional um, operators, uh, pilot or, or uh, observers, they'll, they'll be listed here too. On the initial survey form, there's a new field uh, for environmental considerations, and this is in advance of uh, some requirements for ISO certification. Uh, it's something I'll, I'll hopefully send some more information about in the next few weeks. And then weather forecasts. So the, this is the biggest change really. So I've had to move away from the dark sky uh, weather forecast because they're closing down or well, it's uncertain about their future because they've been bought out by Apple. Uh, so I've moved to a service from a company called MetCheck, who may be familiar to, to you already, uh, but they're UK based and they provide kind of um, aggregated forecasts, which are, which are based on a number of other forecasts. Um, so it's in theory, uh, a very reliable uh, means to, to forecast the weather. You'll get an hourly forecast for five days out and a three hourly forecast for the following five days. So you get 10 days forecasts available. Um, there's an additional column called cloud base and that will give us the lowest cloud base that they're forecasting um, for that particular period in the location of your flight, along with all the other fields that you previously had with, with dark sky. Okay, so the next change is in the no times tab. Um, you now get a map with all the no times on. There's a, a big blob over extra airport, so I'm just going to remove some of those. Just to make it a bit clearer. These are irrelevant uh, facilities, no times anyway. Okay, so we can see there's two left uh, kite flying down up, up here in Langford and kite flying down in Exmouth, which corresponds to these. Um, so as you add and remove no TAMs from the list, they'll be added and removed from the map accordingly. Okay, so that's no TAMs. Uh, site plan has had a few changes. So you can now add um, hazard areas and no fly areas. And the measure distance has, uh, is now persistent. So it will be saved with the map. Um, along with the label. So, you draw a so let's draw a hazard area. And a danger area or no fly area. And let's measure something just by way of illustration. So move the roof of roof. And you'll see that the, the line gets a measurement shown against it uh, and that's saved against the job. So they're the main enhancements to the site plan. And the key's been updated as well, of course. And then in the risk assessment, 
there's now an overall initial and overall final risk assessment score. So as you go through um, and add your initial risks, final risks, the overall total will be calculated. And it's simply the average of the sum of the probability and severity for each of the risks in each column. So I'll just go through and add, add those uh, risks in. So once you've added the risk for every risk, then it'll calculate out the score for you. So you can see we started uh, with an average of uh, seven, we're now down to four. Um, so this is against the OSC risk assessment, but it's exactly the same for the standard risk assessment. Uh, the risk matrix has been updated too, so that uh, just makes it a bit clearer how the, the risks are calculated. So, for example, P4S2 is probability 4, severity 2, which is a score of 6. Um, so anything 6 or 7 is uh, a risk worthy of review. Anything 5 or below is acceptable. Um, anything above 7. Eight, nine, or ten is unacceptable. And the definitions are below. Okay, so that's the, all the changes in the job section. Uh, I think that just about covers everything, apart from um, I need to tell you I've updated the terms and conditions on the privacy policy, um, and also the cookie policy. So you'll be prompted to accept cookies when you next log in to Dream Desk. Have a read through the the terms and conditions that you that were applicable when you signed up are the ones that still apply to you but anybody new signing up will, will um, have these terms uh, associated with their account and privacy policy is much more detailed than it was previously so it details out um, the data that's collected where it goes what it's done what's done with it and so on so please have a read at your leisure so that just about covers everything that was released today any problems please give me a shout as usual the quickest way is, is via the bug reporting, uh, just drop me a note and I'll pick that up as an email and follow up with you. Other than that, thanks very much for your time. All the best for 2021 and I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.